When AMD launched the RDNA 2 architecture in 2020, one of the headlines was the introduction of Smart Access Memory, a feature that allowed GPUs to better address the available VRAM. Except it wasn't new at all. Smart Access Memory was spookily similar to Resizable Bar, a technology developed by the PCI Express Group a decade earlier. SAM is only officially available on RX 5, 6 and 7000 series GPUs. However, as part of the modded Nimes driver set, it is possible to enable Rebar, or SAM, on the GPUs AMD deemed unworthy. Older GPUs in the GCN series still have a lot of relevance in 2023. Polaris series cards are still being sold quote-unquote brand new, and Vega 56 and 64 have proven to have enough performance to keep up with most modern games. Adding smart access memory support can bring these old but gold GPUs up to feature parity with at least the first generation RDNA cards, and although AMD would probably rather you didn't, you can do so by simply changing a registry key, or as I am in this video, using the Nimes modded driver set instead of the official ones. The platform side of things is another matter. Anything from before Intel 11th Gen and AMD 5000 series may require a BIOS update, and unless the motherboard manufacturer has made one, that may mean an unofficial modded BIOS. This could cause quite a headache and possibly brick your PC, and as such, if you have an older platform, I'm afraid I don't have any info for you on how to enable SAM, but I'm sure you can find some by googling your specific motherboard model number, followed by the term resizable bar. To enable SAM on my setup, I used the Nimes drivers, mainly because I only found out about the registry hack after I'd already done the benchmarks. I'll include a link to the registry key in the description, but for the purposes of this video, I'll quickly cover the method I used. After making sure you have resizable bar enabled and CSM disabled in your motherboard's BIOS, uninstall your AMD drivers, using DDU for preference, and install the Nemos driver package as normal, choosing AMD default whenever you find something you're not sure of. Then return to the main menu on the driver installer, choose the kernel toolbox and force enable resizable bar. You may need to reboot your PC at this point, and when you then open your Radeon software and go to the Performance tab, you should see Smart Access Memory is enabled. If not, you may need to go back to the BIOS and confirm that you've properly enabled Resizable Bar. I usually forget to disable CSM, so make sure to double check that before you leave the BIOS. Et voila! One SAM enabled GPU that had no business of being SAM enabled. My choice of card for this test is the Sapphire Nitro Vega 64 I reviewed a few weeks ago, and the rest of the test rig consists of a Ryzen 5 5600X on a Gigabyte B550 Gaming XV2 with 32 gigs of DDR4 3600. If you were expecting SAM to be a one-click performance boost across the board, these early results are going to disappoint you. The Last of Us performs about the same with or without smart access memory. Or, at least, that's the case at 1080 high and 1440 medium with high textures, both of which fit nicely within the GPU's 8GB frame buffer. I did test at 1080 Ultra, which, of course, uses more than 8GB, and although overall performance was about the same, there was slightly less stuttering with SAM enabled, as can be seen in the improved 0.1% lows. Again, so long as you're within the 8GB limit, Resident Evil 4 performs the same whether you're playing with SAM or not. The small differences are most likely caused by minor run-to-run -run variations more than anything. My attempt at a 1080 max settings run, exceeding the 8GB limit of the GPU, caused the game to crash with SAM enabled, so I can't really tell if there's a performance benefit or not. This isn't looking too hopeful. If anything, Jedi Survivor's performance actually suffers slightly from the addition of SAM, if only by a very small margin. This is more noticeable at 1440, where the SAM run actually saw slightly more stutter than the non-SAM run. Ratchet & Clank can be a bit rough on older hardware, and I find that 1080 medium is the sweet spot for the Vega 64. Whatever it is that makes this game so demanding, SAM isn't going to make the difference. There's barely a single frame between the two.
At 1080p, the results in Plague Tale Requiem were almost carbon copies with or without SAM. At 1440p, there's a small variation with SAM enabled, seeing half a frame less on average and almost a frame more at minimum. Hardly noticeable, really. After all that negativity, I was ready for some good news. Forza Horizon 5 benefits hugely from SAM, gaining almost 10% at 1080 Ultra and about 15% at 1440 High. The benefit at 1440 Ultra is slightly less impactful, but after the last few results, it's good to see a game which actually benefits. Halo Infinite also sees an uplift, if you look really, really hard. Going from 73.5 to 75 is a 2% improvement, and could easily be within the margin of error, but hey, at least it's not a drop in performance. There is a small drop in performance in God of War at 1080 Ultra. The 67 FPS average without SAM falls to 65 FPS with it. Again, this is like a 3% difference, but if we're pretending a 2% difference in Halo isn't margin of error stuff, then we have to accept this as a loss too. Spider-Man... Okay, never mind. There's precisely bugger all difference with or without Sam at 1080p very high. There's about a frame and a half drop at 1440 high, but as the game doesn't have a canned benchmark, I think it's safe to blame that on small differences between test runs. Uncharted was a bit of a surprise. There's little to no difference in performance at 1080 Ultra between Sam on and Sam off, but at 1440 Ultra there's a noticeable and repeatable 5% benefit to turning Sam on. So far things have been looking a bit dire for smart access memory, but the next three games might turn things around. Cyberpunk sees roughly 8% gains at 1080 medium and high. This doesn't at all make up for the performance difference this GPU has seen in this game in the last year, but it's better to have the extra frames than not. The Witcher 3's benefit is smaller and only happens at 1080p. Using the Ultra preset I saw about 3% more frames on average with SAM, mostly thanks to a much higher 1% low score. At 1440p I wasn't so fortunate and the average actually dropped a frame or two. Fortnite is one game I can guarantee repeatable results for, thanks to the replay feature, so I can say with absolute confidence that Sam does give a performance benefit. Sometimes. At 1080p low, it saw a near 10% boost to averages and about 3% better lows. At medium, that drops to less than 5% on average and actually loses a frame at the minimum. And at epic, the difference is negligible. The Starfield benchmarks were all taken on the 3rd of September, just two days after early access launch, using the Nimes 23.8.2 driver set and no other performance mods or adjustments beyond enabling SAM. At 1080 medium, there's no difference in the average, but almost one frame better 1% lows. Honestly, that's a small enough gap that I'm willing to call it no difference at all. With all that said, I think I can make a conclusion about using SAM on Vega GPUs and... Hmm, feels like I'm forgetting something. Ah, yes, HBCC. In my main review of the Vega 64, I talked at length about AMD's mostly forgotten method for turning system RAM into VRAM, allowing for far larger frame buffer sizes. Does SAM help with that? Well, to be blunt, not really. I didn't benchmark 100% of the games with both HBCC and SAM enabled because it turned out to be really, really unstable. I tried removing my undervolt and even overvolting and still Witcher 3, Plague Tale Requiem and several others crashed often. Halo Infinite crashed repeatedly in fact, not letting me have more than about 30 seconds in game. The games I did test scored really closely to those HBCC results without SAM.
So, is it worth going through the hassle to enable smart access memory on older GPUs? It doesn't look like it, unless you find a game that really and truly benefits. For those select few games though, it is actually free performance for relatively little effort. And of course, if you have an unsupported GPU like the R9 290, then you might also see a performance benefit from Nimes simply due to having up-to-date drivers, which many of these older cards no longer have. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.